So a lot of teachers teach the ambiguous case in a way that looks like this, or this, or something like this. But here's what I have to say. No, no, and definitely no. I mean, this process right here takes two x's to cover up. That's a pretty bad sign. So for today's crazy calculation, we're going to learn about the ambiguous case, but the easy way. So what is the ambiguous case? Well, the ambiguous case is when you're given SSA, or side-side angle in a triangle. And when you're given SSA, there can be one, two, or no triangles. And why does this happen? The mathematical explanation is that when you're given SSA, you will use law of sines to find another angle, and to do that, you'll use inverse sine. And when you take inverse sine, there could be no answers. For example, if you take the inverse sine of 1.3, your calculator will tell you error because sine has to be less than or equal to 1. Or there could also be two solutions, but your calculator only tells you one. Think about the inverse sine restrictions that you might know about. Your calculator will only give you an angle between 90 and negative 90 degrees, so if there's another solution, your calculator won't tell you that. And now, here's the visual explanation. I don't want you to think mathematically right now, just sit back and watch the visuals. So you're given side-side angle, right? That gives you two sides, and I tried to make these look sort of like wood boards to remind you that you cannot change the side lengths of these two sides. These are set in stone, you can't change them. And then you have another side, and I just drew it as a line like this, because you can make it as short or as long as you want. You aren't given the length of this side. And also you're given A, so an angle. Let's say we were given the measure of this angle right here. I'm going to put a lock on this angle to remind you we cannot change this angle right here, and these two wooden boards we cannot change the length of. But what we can change is the angle right here and the angle right here. So now to find the triangle or triangles that these two legs and this angle can make, what we can do is we can swing this leg back and forth, like this. And now if this side ever touches this side right here at any point, then that means we have a triangle. So if we swing it right here, we get a triangle because it closes off this triangle right here. And also if we swing it right here, we get another triangle. Now, as you can see, my model isn't exactly perfect, but let's draw some more accurate versions of these triangles. So the first triangle, if you drew it accurately, would look like this. And the second triangle, when you swing this leg over, would look like this. Now let's look at a different situation using this same model. Let's say our side that we were given right here is a little shorter. And now if we try to swing this side back and forth, it never connects with the bottom, which means there's no triangle. And now let's say this side is a little longer. Now if we swing it, it's just long enough to make a right triangle right here, but it can never make any more triangles. It just makes the one triangle right here. And the reason why it's a right triangle is because the closest distance between a point and a line is always a perpendicular line. So that's why it's a right triangle. Now let's look at one more situation. Let's say this leg right here that we were given was a lot longer, even longer than this leg right here. If we swing it right here, it connects, it makes a triangle. But if we swing it further, it never connects again. So there's just one triangle, and that's this triangle right here. So now you should be able to see how we can end up with one triangle, no triangles, or two triangles. But how are we supposed to know if there are one, two, or no triangles? Well, we don't have to memorize all that stuff that we saw in the beginning of the video that a lot of other teachers tell you to memorize. We just need to test it. Take a look at this example problem right here. Angle A is 140 degrees, side A is 5, and side B is 7. And in problems where you have two of the same letter, that means that the capital letter is the angle opposite the lowercase letter side. So I'm just going to draw a sketch of this triangle, and it's not going to look anything like how this triangle would actually look if you drew it accurately, it's going to be something like an equilateral triangle. So this is 140 degrees right here. The side 5 is opposite the 140 degree angle because they have the same letter. And then B is equal to the side 7. So that could either be this side or this side, but I just chose to put B on this side. And now, since this side is B, that means this angle right here is capital B. So to find the angle B right here, I'm just going to use the law of sines. So the goal is, by the time you're watching this video, is that you know the law of sines pretty well already. So for most of this video, I'm going to speed through the law of sines pretty quickly. And if you want help with the law of sines, you can watch my law of sines video. So anyways, we're going to set up our first ratio, sine of 140 degrees over 5, because 140 is opposite 5. And that's equal to sine of angle B over 7. 
And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross multiply just like this. And now to get sine b by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by 5. And now we get sine b is equal to 0 0.90. So to find the measure of angle b, I'm going to take the inverse sine of 0 0.9. So I get inverse sine of 0 0.9 is equal to 64.2 degrees. So that means this angle right here should be 64.2 degrees. But let's take a step back first. Does that make sense? Because we have a 140 degree angle right here, and we have a 64.2 degree angle that should also be part of the same triangle. But you already know that a triangle has to be 180 degrees exactly, and 140 plus 64.2 is obviously bigger than 180. And that makes no sense, right? So that means there's just no triangle. Let's take a look at another example. A is equal to 25 degrees, the side opposite of that is 6, and another side is 20. So I'm going to just quickly draw another triangle. As you can see, this is really messy. It doesn't matter how the picture looks. And now, since this right here is B, this angle right here should be angle B. And now again, to find angle B, I'm just going to use the law of sines. So I'm going to speed through this really, really quickly. But if you want to see what I did, you can just pause the video and take a look at my work. So I get sine B is equal to 1.41. But wait, remember, sine of an angle is always less than or equal to 1. And obviously, 1.41 is bigger than 1. So that means there's no triangle. Because if you tried to plug inverse sine of 1.41 into your calculator, you just get error. So that means no triangle. So basically, if something that you got makes no sense, then there should be no triangle. Now let's look at another example. I have my angle A and side A and my side B. So I'm going to draw another sketch. 105 degrees is opposite 11, and 5 is opposite angle B. So now again, to find angle B, I'm just going to use the law of sines, just like this. Again, if you want to see what I did, you can pause the video. And I get B right here is equal to 26.1 degrees. And now if we do a reality check, yeah, 105 plus 26.1, that's less than 180. That leaves enough room for a third angle. So yes, this triangle does exist. So now we just need to find angle C and side C, right? But wait, remember, we need to check for two triangles. And how do we do that? Well, if there are two triangles, then the supplementary angle of that angle you just found using inverse sine will make another triangle. And if you forget what supplementary means, it just means that the two angles add up to 180 degrees. And why is it the supplementary angle? Well, let's take a look back at our model. Remember, our first triangle looked like this, and our second triangle looked like this. And now, let's put these two triangles together. And now remember, when we swung this leg around to make this second red triangle right here, the side length of the triangle never changed. So that means this side and this side are congruent to each other. This piece of wood was the same size the whole time. And now since these two sides are congruent to each other, that means these two angles are congruent to each other. So if we decide to call this angle right here theta, that means this angle right here is also theta. And now let's take a look at this angle right here. If we want to find this angle right here, we can see that it makes a straight line with theta right here. So it has to be 180 degrees minus theta. So now we've just proven that this angle right here should be supplementary to this angle right here. They will add up to 180 degrees. So if we pull these apart, this angle right here and this angle right here are supplementary. So now let's take a look back at our triangle that we were in the middle of solving. If there are two triangles, then angle B in the second triangle will be supplementary to the 26.1 degrees. So let's see if the supplementary angle works. The supplementary angle to 26.1 degrees is 153.9 degrees. And would this work in a triangle? Well, 153.9 degrees plus 105 degrees is obviously bigger than 180 degrees. So that means this would not work in another triangle. So there's only one triangle. So now we can just forget about this stuff right here and continue solving this triangle right here. So we can find angle C by doing 180 minus 105 minus 26.1, so we get angle C right here is 48.9 degrees. And now to find side C, I'm just going to use the law of sines, just like this. So I get C is equal to 8.58. And now, as you can see, we found all three missing parts of this triangle. We found angle B using the law of sines, and then we found angle C by subtracting these two angles from 180. And then last but not least, we use the law of sines again to find the side length of C. Now let's take a look at another example. We have 70 degrees opposite 155, and then another side length is 160. So I'm going to draw my triangle right here. 70 is opposite 155, and B 
is opposite 160. So again, I'm going to use the law of sines to solve for angle B, like this. So I get B is equal to 75.9 degrees. And now to save some space, I'm going to get rid of the work right here, and I'm just going to put B up here in the corner. Now we have to check for two triangles. Remember, if there are two triangles, then angle B in the second triangle will be supplementary to the angle B we just found. So it would be 180 degrees minus 75.9, which would be 104.1 degrees. And now let's check if this would make sense in a triangle. Would 104.1 and 70 degrees make sense in a triangle? Well, 70 plus 104.1 gives us 174.1, which is still less than 180, which is perfect because it leaves us room for a third triangle. So we know there are two triangles, and B in that second triangle would be 104.1 degrees. So now before we get distracted with the second triangle, let's go back and finish the first triangle. So we know this angle right here is 75.9 degrees, and now we can just find angle C and side C to finish off the first triangle. To find side C, we'll do 180 minus 70 minus 75.9 to get 34.1. So we know this angle right here is 34.1 degrees. And now to find side C, again, I'll just use the law of sine, and you can see I got 92.5. So this side right here is 92.5. And now I'm just going to put all this information that I found in an information bank up here so I don't forget. And now let's take a look at our second triangle. These are all labeled with primes because I'm going to label the second triangle with a prime so you can tell the two triangles apart. So angle B prime we already solved for and it's 104.1 degrees because it's the supplementary angle of 75.9 degrees. And now to find angle C we'll just do 180 minus 70 minus 104.1 to get 5.9 degrees right here and we'll add that to our information bank. And again, to find side C prime, we'll just use the law of sines again, and we get C prime is equal to 17. So this side right here is 17, and we'll add that to our information bank. So now we've solved for all three missing parts in the first triangle, and all three missing parts in the second triangle. So if you remember, my two triangles look like this, and as you can see, they're not exactly the most accurate. So let's see what these triangles would actually look like if they were drawn to scale. The first triangle, this one right here, would look something like this. And the second triangle, this one right here, would look like this. As you can see, both these triangles have the same three parts that we were given. 70 degrees, 160, and 155 opposite the 70 degree angle. And the other three parts that we're missing are different in the two triangles. So we found both triangles without having to memorize anything, except maybe that this angle and this angle are supplementary. So now let's go over everything we learned. In summary, the first step is to find the second angle of the triangle, so the first one that you're not given. If it doesn't make sense, then there's no triangle. So if your triangle adds up to more than 180 degrees, that doesn't make sense. If you have to take inverse sine of one point something, or something bigger than one, then it doesn't make sense. Step two is to see if the supplementary angle of that angle you just found can also make a triangle. If so, then there are two triangles. If not, then there's just one triangle. And the last step is just to solve for the rest of the triangle or triangles using the law of sines. That you should be pretty good at already. And that's it for this video. As you can see, we tackled the ambiguous case problems without having to memorize anything at all. Like always, if you have any questions, comments, videos you want to see, or anything else you want to say, feel free to drop a comment down below. And other than that, I will see you next time.